Russian map. Okay, that's better. <laughs> so there's only one, one other one that fixed. Now, I had editing permissions for that collection, so I was able to edit that collection. Now, when you collections load their data within the portal, they have the option of allowing public edits or private edits. And since I had permissions, that edit was actually applied right away. If a collection allows public edits, that means that people that don't have permissions can actually open up that editing page and fix that coordinate. Now, the thing is, if they do that, it's not going to be applied right away. An administrator has to come and you do it and say accept or reject. And we could actually, it was Oklahoma, right? Nebraska. Omaha. So I could actually go to that collection and go in there and I could say review specimen edits. Okay, so that's the edit I just made. So and it said it was applied. So actually the man manager, so in this case, that collection is a snapshot of their data, their central database is in their variant. And now I made a change in the portal, but the thing is it's not changed in the source data interface. Next time they refresh their, their data, it's going to copy over that change. So what they can do here is come here once a week, and then they could actually select and print out the changes, give it to the data entry person to fix it, or else they could also download it as an Excel. And if they have the interface to ingest those changes, then they could ingest them into their system. Now, if someone edited it that wasn't a true editor, right here, it would say not apply. And so the administrator would have to come click it and say, um, change, the, uh, change it to apply, and then they could close it out. So, I think that's all I want to do that. So now I'm going to actually talk about some of the workflows that are used, where Symbio is used to actually to, um, to actually digitize some of the TCM data, and uh, particularly on the Lichen and Brown project. So they have two portals. One TCM, they have a Lichen portal and a Brown type portal. And the goal is to, to digitize 2.3 million specimens over the next four, well, over four years, where about a little under three years remaining. Now, the goal to get this done is actually go, they have 16 imaging stations <coughs> distributed throughout the country. And these stations are going out to their area and the collections without their region, or else they're getting their collections mailed to them, and they're imaging them quick and dirty. So depending on the collection, they're able to do anywhere from a couple hundred to a thousand an hour, to just take images of just the labels, and that's it. Because for the most part, an image, macro image of a lichen or bryophyte is not very useful for identification. And then they're submitting these images through uh, an FTP server, uh, and every day there's these scripts that run to load them on to an uh, IDIG bio server where, where the portals are. And the uh, barcode is in the file name and it uses that to link the image to any existing records, any existing records that were digitized before. If a record doesn't exist, what it does is it creates a blank record and it pops, populates it with the um, with the barcode. So here's the <coughs> graph that shows the same well, uh, workflow. So that's the imaging stage on the left there. Goes out on that FTP server, loaded in there. If the record does exist, it links it to that record, and the workflow is done because it's already digitized. But in most cases, most of those images don't have a um, specimen record. So it's actually a blank record 
is created and is linked to that blank record. It's populated with a catalog number. And in a lot of cases, some of these um, institutions are actually collecting some metadata, what we call skeletal metadata. So depending on how the collection is filed, there's, they could collect the country, the state, um, and uh, where it's filed by name. And they put that in Excel spreadsheet. They load that information in. That also gets linked and populated within that blank record. And then the next step that we're working on right now is an automated OCR and natural language processing stuff. So the hope is that if we go in there, if we digitize all the images quick and dirty, get them in there, then we can actually start digitizing the data off the labels from their herbarium specimens. And what we could use is we could use a lot of tools out there such as OCR, natural language processing, crowdsourcing, and just when people go home and they're bored and they want to start doing their collection, instead of going on, on um, Facebook or something like that, they can go there and type in the specimens. It is a thing they get. So now I'm going to go to stay on the light end portal. Oh, actually, no, let me go back to the sign And I'm going to go to Desert Botanical Gardens website. And they, they have the same workflow, actually, which the um, light ends and brown lights are doing. So they're imaging everything quick and dirty. And then they load it in and it gets tagged as unprocessed. So here's, here's all the data that's, that's in their system. That's all the columns that are in there for this set of records. So it's pretty sparse. Now right now, That's the general concept of actually looking for duplicates. It can be a huge time saver, especially when you're dealing with huge, um, huge labels. Now, one thing to point out in this form is a lot of data is actually verified as you're typing it in. So, let's say I forgot to do the, uh, the negative sign. Well, it says, is it accurate? It's actually going in China and your state and country says something else. So it gives you, if you type in a date that's invalid, it'll also tell you it's invalid. Um, there's lookup tables for taxonomic names. Now, scientific names will actually allow you to type in something that's not in the taxonomic thesaurus because it doesn't, you don't want to slow down data entry. 
but they will warn you that I said did you spell it correctly. And then at the end of the day or end of the week, the manager can actually go in there and say, okay, what didn't link up to the source? What do I have to fix? Or maybe it's something that has to be added in. Okay. Even though we're integrating OCR and natural language processing within the interface, it's not that silver bullet, that magic bullet that's going to solve all our problems like a lot of us hoped in the past. There's a lot of, a lot of problematic aspects of OCR and, and parsing out uh, image labels. Um, there's bad old fonts, there's fake labels, there's a lot of uh, form labels such as this case where Where you have um, you have the label and the information in different fonts, different size fonts, on different lines, so that messes up the OCR. So it generally gives bad OCR out there. And a lot of these labels are handwritten, so and there's no reliable OCR at this point outside of what the postal service does to read the uh, very controlled label of the uh, of addresses and the uh, zip code. Outside of that, there's nothing that's really reliable for reading hand, handwritten labels. So to show some of these, show one of these problems. So this is actually a faded label of an herbarium. You know, it's it's actually not handwritten, so it should OCR well. Well, that's the OCR you get, which is not very useful at all. However, there are some solutions. If we take that same image and we actually increase the contrast and make it a little bit darker and this would be done automatically. Now if we OCR that, that's what we get, which is pretty darn good. So there's a lot of information in there. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. So there's also a lot of changes, uh, challenges with the uh, parsing out the label. 
you know, there's variable layouts, there's new standards. You know, this is assuming that you get really good OCR, which is which is difficult in itself. However, there's solutions there too. Here's some a variety of, of um, labels out there. So there's um, look using authority tables and distance algorithms and word stats and and there's actually um, algorithms out there for recognizing formats and so forth. This is all being experimented with. There's an OCR working group that's associated with iBigBio. And, and there's a bunch of programmers. We had a uh, hackathon last month and to, to actually get together and actually work on some of these, these solutions. And we're developing together as a group a bunch of web services that hopefully will make some of these tools available so people can start integrating them into their, their interfaces. But it's not easy. So. Now, this shows how basically a lot of these portals are integrated specimen model 